Marcus Rashford has gone from Ballon d'Or potential to underwhelming prospect, to hero, to seeking options elsewhere, to Manchester United legend, to meme. Let's talk about it. The story so far of Marcus Rashford is one of frustration. I need to say instantly that I love Marcus Rashford. I want him to succeed so much. I think that he is a fantastic talent and can push England to great things in major tournaments. Rashford for years has been the face of Manchester United. I mean, it is hard to imagine when they didn't have Marcus Rashford. He's been part of the furniture of the club since early 2016, seven years ago. His debut was a moment that many fans would never forget. Rashford being a young prospect within the academy that had a lot of hope and expectation, a product of Carrington. Joining the club at the age of seven, a Manchester boy born in Manchester, he's a born red through and through. Manchester United versus Mitchelland in the UEFA Europa League. The lineups were put out with a front three of Juan Mata, Memphis Depay, and Anthony Martial. However, in the warm ups, Anthony Martial picked up an injury and they had to look to the bench. As it's the Europa League, they were able to give some youngsters a go. So, in typical United fashion, giving youth a chance. So, Marcus Rashford got given a chance and my god did he take it. Man United win 5-1 with youngster Marcus Rashford, a young Manc striker, scoring two goals on his debut in the Europa League. As debuts go, it can't get any better than that, with Louis van Gaal seemingly picking out a diamond, but look, it's just one game. They've got Arsenal next, so he's gonna be put back to the sidelines. The lineups come out and Marcus Rashford is in the starting 11 yet again. And what did he do in this game? He scored twice again in a matter of three days. Marcus Rashford changed his life forever. And ever since this week, the Rashford era began. First things first, tell me down below your thoughts on Marcus Rashford. And if you guys do enjoy, smash a like button. Let's hit 3000 likes and please do subscribe. Only 70% of you guys that has watched my recent videos are not subbed. So please help me out here. I do wish to hit 400,000 subs by the end of the year. And Mazzola Designs to Code UK. They've got Christmas discounts for the entirety of the next two months. Every single item, 15% off for the entire period. Use code Xmas for a discount. So before we continue into the past, let's go into why I'm doing this video in the first place. Rashford is a player that has got a lot of raw ability and has the attributes that you would think is the hallmarks of a world-class player. However, Rashford appears to fall victim to something called a purple patch player, where he is so inconsistently consistent or consistently inconsistent. Sometimes he is the most frustrating player to watch as he can do everything right, have everything almost nailed, but the final product just slips away for seemingly no reason. For example, let's go back to 1920. 17 goals, 9 assists in the Premier League in 31 games. Decent return. Next year, 11 goals and 11 assists, but 6 goals and 6 in the Champions League. Fair play. And then the next year, 4 goals, 2 assists in 25 league games. Only 1 goal in the Champions League. So that is 5 goals in an entire season. It's not good enough for a player at his stature. However, the next year blows up. 17 goals, 5 assists in the league in 35 games. Scoring 6 in the EFL Cup 
and six in the Europa League. Manchester United to top four and winning the EFL Cup. There was periods in this year that he was guaranteed to score a game. For example, in late December, he scored a goal versus Nottingham Forest, right? And then from then on out, he scored in every single game, bar one, up until the end of February. One game, two game, three game, four game, then he missed against Palace, and then six, seven, eight, nine, 10. 10 out of 11 games, he got a goal, but yet fizzled out near the end of the year due to a leg injury. Even crazy, Marcus Rashford had all that form going into that Liverpool game where they lost 7-0, and from that game, he's not been the same. However, coming into this year, nine games played, one goal and one assist, and his performances have been lacking to say the least making mistakes that he made years ago however it seems to have caught up back up on him his decision making has been called up upon and that seems to be the main thing he's got everything else the pace the power however his composure and decision making seems to be the underlying factor and sadly that isn't something that you can just teach so we will break down into this however i want to go into why i count him as a hero why many people do and why this makes talking about him such an interesting aspect because people also meme him due to this as well and that is his out of football contributions marcus rashford is not just a footballer but to many people the people's champion because to some people he's not only marcus rashford he's marcus rashford MBE. If you are not from the UK, you may be quite confused, but an MBE is when you are honoured by the British Empire, which is awarded to a person by the king or queen for a particular achievement. Typically, if a footballer ever does get recognised by royalty, it's due to winning a World Cup. However, Rashford has shown that he is much more than just a footballer. He received an MBE by Prince William in recognition of his campaign to support vulnerable children during the COVID-19 pandemic. Rashford, at the age of 24, successfully campaigned for the UK government to provide free school meals to vulnerable children during the lockdown period in the UK. And he forced the government into not just one, but two U-turns to extend their support during the summer and winter holidays. And his campaign that he put forward resulted in policy change in the UK government. This is outstanding. Marcus grew up in Wivenshaw in the south of Manchester, where in his area there was already quite a known normality of poverty. Rashford, like many kids in England, wasn't raised in a upper class or even really a middle class background. Many players that plays for the current English national team are kids that worked in relatively normal lower income families the story goes that when rashford received his first pro contract he used his wages to help his mother pay off the mortgage for a house in this modern day era footballers are seen as purely just money hungry and mercenaries where they just follow the money and only care about using football as a asset to receive fame, receive glory, receive money and all that and they don't care about anything else. They want to go to work, receive their big paycheck, live in their fancy mansions and be happy and that is all really the standard is of being a footballer. You have an incredible talent that most people cannot do. You got an asset, a skill, and people will pay you a lot of money to use that skill to really make more money. Rashford represents the opposite of that. He is refreshing as a figure in today's world football and an actual good footballer to look up to for young kids across the world and is a compassionate person growing up in a lower class background in South Manchester, having all these stories and knowing what it's like to be a young person, to having to rely on free school meals, having experienced having limited funds to go and do stuff, knowing what it's like. He, as a rare example, is using his resources for good. And to see a footballer, a young one at that, show up the British Parliament, highlights how the current Conservative government have been so out of touch in the realities in places like Manchester, 
like Liverpool, like Leeds, like Newcastle, Northern working class places or working class places in general, but especially up north. For many people like myself, I look up to him. However, there is always a but, there's always another side and people have tried and unfortunately some have been succeeding to attempt to use this against him. When I went back to his 21-22 season, he had a bad year and people were using this as a reason of why he's not been performing on the pitch. You may have heard the phrase, stick to football. That is a, a phrase that is thrown around a lot. If it's with anything to do with politics, people throw the word stick to football okay and people use this on Rashford saying stick to football because your politics and your campaigning outside of the sport is getting in the way of your performances and this in this time period was used against him throughout the entire year feel free and type up Marcus Rashford meme and you're gonna see multiple memes about kids having no food and the reality that most people fail to understand is that the idea that politics is not linked to football and politics and football should always be separate is nonsense and you are ignoring the history of football if you think this is the case politics is football that has been the underlying main reason i mean look at just the world cups for example and if you think that's got nothing to do with politics since the 90s 80s 60s politics is intertwined with football if you like it or not rashford gets memed a lot for showing any sort of personality for example one is during this tough time period he made tweets giving apologies and condolences to the fans saying that the club is letting them down and that they are working hard to make them happy again working hard to improve the club trying to own up to his action and to face the consequences and i don't get why people mean it so much just type up marcus rashford essay on google and you'll see tons of people type it on twitter you'll see tons of it this alongside the likes of bruno fernandez or harry Maguire, created a, a paragraph fc pr company fc this was a meme that was lasting for a year or so with marcus rashford being the front running of that throughout all of this he's still a guaranteed starter in every manchester united team the biggest club in england with scrutiny week in week out no matter what he does and with this added on top of it all this campaigning on top of all of this that he doesn't even need to do makes me respect him even more and sometimes it can reach boiling point for example during the euros in the final he alongside two other footballers in Sancho and Saka sadly missed penalties in the final against Italy. Rashford had a, a mural in his local area due to his fantastic work during the COVID time period that a community came together and wanted to honour a respected member in their community that has done great things and after losing the Euros final it got defaced by his very own people. Many defamatory things was wrought on that, calling him basically awful and um, some phallic um, things were drawn on there as you can very much imagine. And the response to this was incredible. The community came together to not only cover up what was written, but to use it as an example of how a community can come together and to create something so much more powerful than what was initially planned. The mural itself was great. Quote, take pride in knowing that your struggle will play the biggest role in your purpose. People all around the community and even parts of the country, hundreds of messages in support and solidarity. With almost 1 million likes, he did this post in what was a very humbling message, ending off with a Marcus Rashford, 23 years old, black man from Withington and Withenshaw, South Manchester. If I have nothing else, I have that. One of the notes was left by a child called Reggie that was age six, writing thank you for all our dinner. I've talked so much about his work outside of football here because it has to be said, because Rashford resembles so much more. He represents more than just football. And that's all the reason why I want him to perform so well. I want him to succeed so bad so bad and seeing his recent run of form in comparison to last year 
makes it all the more frustrating. It got so bad that during the late end of that 21, 22 year, he was at a crossroads and news came out that he considered life outside of Manchester United, that maybe he would have to leave Manchester to reinvigorate his career again. Rashford being played all over the park as a striker, as a left winger, as a right winger, and over time he was given a big chance as a striker, but I think many people can agree that Rashford is main ability is not at striker what is he good at he's got incredible pace he's got fantastic 1v1 ability and he can shoot however he's not fantastic in the air and he's not great at hold up play and his passing can be inconsistent at best so where does that put him he's a left winger or an inside forward from the left hand side that can stretch the pitch with his pace and use his 1v1 and finishing ability to cut inside on his favoured right foot and that is where we find his best performances for Manchester United last season. With Ronaldo in that 21-22 season it didn't work, it felt like Ronaldo was not linking well with him. Sometimes even though you may have two fantastic players the chemistry and what they wanted on the pitch can be off and that felt obvious here that Ronaldo simply didn't have the cohesion to really work with the players around him meaning that you kind of had to feed Ronaldo more than the other way around and it wasn't balanced and crazily enough Wout Vegost was the answer to get the most out of Rashford a number nine that can drop deep who wasn't the greatest finisher but his link-up play was to a very good standard who worked hard that pressed and meant that Rashford had more room to run into space and to stretch the opposition this year he's had to adapt again and that's again one further issue that United has never been consistent they've never really had a consistent number nine or a front three there's always something new going on. That is potentially one more further issue with Rashford. If it's Martial with a back in day Mason Greenwood, if it was Edison Cavani, if it was Higalo showing up, if it was Ronaldo, Jaden Sancho, if it was Jesse Lingard, if it was Anthony, there's always something else going on. And this was in the period of the last three years. In this season, for example, the likes of Holland, people have accused him of just having a reluctance to pass to his new partner. For example, in the game against Brighton, people accuse him of being seriously trigger happy in shooting at almost every opportunity and failing to look around him for a better option. He had nine shots that day. Same thing happened against Burnley as well. The question, is he being selfish? Well, in terms of how many passes he makes to his teammates, it's no different to what he did the previous year. His decision making has occasionally been left to be desired in these streaky periods that he's not in form. There's also scrutiny that he's been unwilling to track back or press and that's something that he's never really been that known for. He's not a active presser. In the last year he had fewer than Bruno Fernandes, Fred, Sancho, just a little bit more than Anthony and the same as Cristiano Ronaldo. This is due to the pressures per 90 minute stat. So if history has taught us anything, that Rashford has gone through this time period before, where he's had a couple of months or even in some cases an entire season of just being out of form. However, his ability is still there to show that he will be back yet again. However, why is his consistency always not there? Well, maybe that's only something that he can tell you. However, should he do better? I mean, there's always been an expectation that he could be up there fighting for Ballon d'Or back in the late tense. If Rashford was at a different club, if he was at City, if he was at a club overseas to Real Madrid, would he perform better then? Would he be more consistent then? Well, we'll never know. But to be a success at Manchester United, as we've seen, demands an incredible mentality. And that's something that he absolutely has. So only time can tell if he can get back to where he was last year. Tell me down below in the comments your thoughts. I'm looking forward to it. I appreciate your time. And yeah, I will see you next time. Peace out.